the Colosseum. It was in this vaunted arena that the masses satisfied their bloodlust as they watched lethal and skilled gladiators fight to the death. As slaves or prisoners of war, these gladiators were forced into battle and had but one choice, win or die. Sometimes the only hope of a fallen gladiator lie in the whims of the Roman Emperor. Will this fallen warrior survive to fight another day? Or will he be fed to the lions? Actually, gladiatorial contests were way more tame than this. So whoever told you this version must have been a lion. Oh, God, no. Puns? What are you talking about, Adam? This was blood sport. Nope. In fact, for most of gladiatorial history, intentionally killing your opponent was against the rules. That's why only one in ten matches ended in a death. But I thought gladiatorial combat was pure mayhem. They actually had rules? Yep, as well as umpires to enforce them. All right, gents, I want a good clean fight. No headshots from behind, no eye gouging, and be sure to keep those genitals well covered. We don't want anyone losing their bits. Touch weapons and fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> And these umpires were scrupulously fair. In fact, if your opponent fell by accident, the umpire would stop the match and let him get up. Please, let me help. No, oh, you're too kind. But the most important rule, no killing. Gladiators were actually trained to subdue their opponents rather than flat out kill them. Beware my deadly tridents. Which is mostly just for show. I'm really more of a net guy. But if no one dies, how do we know who wins? Easy. A match would actually end when a gladiator was wounded, got too tired, or just held up a finger to tap out. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I give up, I give up. What? But that cuts down on all the awesome murders and decapitations. Why would they do that? Because gladiators were expansive. Many were fed, clothed, housed, armed, and trained by owners called Lannistae. You're up next, kid. I want you to float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, and avoid damage like an uninsured rental car. Go! And it would be a very poor investment if half of your roster was killed every match. Oh, God, no! His resale value is ruined! Thanks a lot! That's why archaeological evidence suggests gladiators had healthy diets and received quality medical care. Due to all of this, some gladiators were able to fight in upwards of 40 battles, similar to a modern-day boxer. And improving his record to 40 and 0, the Butcher from Vedica! Ah, it's just a stage name, folks. I wouldn't butcher anyone. I'm a professional. All right, maybe the matches were safer than I thought, but it doesn't matter because at any moment, the Emperor could decide to kill them. Sorry. While on occasion an Emperor or sponsor would demand a fight to the death, it was rare and generally frowned upon. In fact, Rome's first Emperor outlawed fights to the death entirely. I decree this arena death free! You know how hard it is to get blood out of Sam? But the spectators, didn't untamed masses thirst for blood? No, nope, they were actually more like fans at a sporting event. Come on, Butcher! Let's go, let's go! The truth is, being a gladiator was a lot like being a modern celebrity athlete. Gladiators' portraits graced the walls of public places. Children played with small clay gladiator dolls. Uh, it's an action figure and the most successful fighters even commercially endorsed products. On the field, you may know me as the butcher, but off the field, I'm just a guy who loves fish. And I always get my fish at Octavius' fishmongery. There's no fish like an Octavius fish. Oh.